On three minute analytical chemistry, we're going to be discussing UV vis adsorbent spectroscopy. UV ultraviolet radiation is from about 2 to 400 nanometers, while visible radiation are things that the human eye can perceive, about 4 to 800 nanometers. What we're going to do is shine this radiation onto our sample, and our sample will absorb some of it. We're then going to look at how much and what wavelengths were absorbed by our sample. So here's a typical energy level diagram for a molecule. Here I have the ground and an excited electronic state. On top of that I have vibrational energy levels. What I do is put a photon into this molecule and it's going to promote an electron from the ground to the excited state and a result in adsorbance of that photon. So you can see I can start in the ground electronic state and then go to any of these vibrational energy levels on top. So that causes UV vis to have somewhat broad adsorption profile. Now what I start with is my lamp source and these are typically light bulbs. Things like tungsten lamps, Nernst glowers, xenon arc lamps, and they each have a different intensity versus wavelength range. This is the wavelength in nanometers on this axis. And that's going to be something that control the figure of merit for your measurements. After that, I put my light through a monochromator to select a given wavelength range that I know I'm going to hit my sample with. Here, I have red light leaving my monochromator. So this red light will then hit my sample or the blank, and it will absorb some of it, leading to less intensity. I'm then going to detect that intensity using my detector. So here I have the percent transmittance, and that's calculated as the, per the power of light through my sample divided by the power through my blank times 100. We can use the transmittance to quantify the concentration of analyte in our sample. Adsorbance is defined as minus the log of the transmittance, which is the power through the sample divided by the power through the blank. Beer-Lambert relationship says this adsorbance is equal to epsilon BC, where C is the concentration of my analyte, B is the path length, in other words, the distance in the cuvette that the light travels through, and epsilon is a molar absorptivity coefficient, which tells you the probability of your molecule absorbing that wavelength of light. Typical molar absorptivity coefficients range from zero to about 10 to the fifth for a very strong absorbing molecule. If we scan the wavelength range, we collect a UV-vis spectra where a plot adsorbance versus wavelength on this axis. You can see this molecule absorbed here in the UV, and then we have a peak at around 450 nanometers. I can use this peak at 450 nanometers to quantify the concentration of analyte in my sample. It's good to use a peak as opposed to another spot because it has large intensity and it's invariant. It's not changing as opposed to, say, using 500 nanometers where I have a slope. Now, as I vary the concentration, I'm going to measure the adsorbance at 450 nanometers and generate a calibration curve that looks something like this. So here I have adsorbance versus concentration. You can see the slope of this graph is going to be equal to the molar absorptivity coefficient times b. And I can use this to calculate the molar absorptivity coefficient. Now, it's a linear relationship. In practice, though, the Beer-Lambert relationship is only good at lower concentrations. Once you get to higher adsorbance units, especially above two, stray light becomes a real issue. Stray light is light that hits your detector that's not from your light source. 1% stray light intensity will cause this graph to roll out at about two uh, adsorbance units. Better instruments can function higher, but you typically want to work at the loop ranges where the Beer-Lambert relationship is true.